Hello, everyone. My name is Jaime Martinez. I'm a senior backend engineer in uh, the Container Registry team here at GitLab. And today I'm going to be showing you how to perform the database migration for an omnibus installation for the Container Registry Metadata Database. This is all related to the uh, next generation Container Registry for cell managed instances that is currently in beta uh, phase. Uh, I will be linking all these issues to the uh, video description. So yeah, please follow along there. And um, yeah, today I'm just going to show you how I have a GitLab installation here on the right with Omnibus. You can see that the registry is running and I will show you a little bit of my um, instance and what I have. I have a few projects, a few groups. All of them have some container repositories. Uh, so if I go and navigate to this one of these projects, I can see I have a few 400 images uh, with a few tags each, and it's just random data that I just generated to see this project. Last I checked was around 255 gigabytes of data, so uh, that should give us some um, some information of how long this may take. Uh, so I have an MR here ready uh, with the steps, so this should be uh, publish uh, fairly soon, so you can follow along. Uh, a few things to note, as, as you know, the metadata database is still in beta uh, phase, so please be cautious when you are doing this. Uh, please back up your data if possible. Uh, I know if, if your setup is too big, maybe backing up is not an option, but uh, you should you know, be cautious when you're doing this. Um, and before you start, and some of the requirements, uh, we need uh, GitLab, uh, Omnibus GitLab with 16.7 or later. And we also need a Postgres database uh, with version 12 or above, and it must be accessible from your uh, registry node. So what I'm going to show you here is I already have a registry database. It's just a Postgres instance that is running in the same node as my installation. Uh, so I won't have you know many issues with the, with the uh, network. Uh, but just to show you, here is part of GitLab. I just named my database GitLab registry, and there's no, no relations yet. So I'm going to be following these steps as they are here. So let's get started. Um, just uh, another thing to, a few things to note, the, you know, before you start, once you enable the database, you must continue to use it. If you ever decide to stop using the database, then you may lose data as the registry won't have the same access to the to the data that was there before. So please be um, super cautious about this. Uh, also, never run offline garbage collection after the import is done. After this is done, you can actually enable uh, online garbage collection, and uh, we can see how it's going to be done later on. And uh, yeah, the uh, please also if you have any automated offline garbage collection running, just make sure you disable it. Uh, cool. So to enable the database, let's do something. Let's follow the steps here. We're going to need to uh, edit the GitLab RV file, which in this case is in this location. Cool. Let's search for registry. We only have a few settings for the registry. So let's just put it here. Um, no, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So here we're just going to uh, basically input the settings for our database connection. Uh, please note the first step we need to uh, add the configuration, but set the enable flag as false. Please, uh, we don't want the registry to start using the database yet, but we will need to configure this as it will have the connection settings to perform schema migrations and to perform the import steps. Um, so I do have uh, the user somewhere around here. Just give me one second while I find it.
this is registry. Please use some sort of secret management for this. Don't do what I'm doing. Uh, this is not safe. This is just a throw instance. So you know, I'm just testing things. So it should be fine. But for production, please use a proper secret management solution. Missing some commas here. Yep. Cool. So we've saved the file. So now we should be able to reconfigure, reconfigure GitLab. So if we do this, do like control, configure. This would take a little bit of time. Okay, so this has a finish. Let's check. Okay, the registry is running, um, but the database shouldn't be enabled yet. Um, we can double check that the config is there. Um, if you do, well, uh, Let me see where this is supposed to be. Fire up GitLab registry config. Fire up GitLab registry config YML. Okay, cool. Uh, you can see here uh, all the configuration for the registry. The database stuff has been there set properly. So it's all good. So we're ready to go into the next step. Um, so we can go ahead and apply the schema migrations. And to do this, uh, just follow the steps. It's fairly simple. Um, whoop, I didn't want to execute it yet. I wanted to show you on help command. The, the command is this. Get a control registry database, migrate up. There's a few things that you can do. So for example, we can do a dry run just to see what's going to, going to happen. Uh, this is just going to show me what, what is going to happen, but it's not going to commit the changes to the database. Um, sorry, I don't want to do this. Let me see the help. You can also run by a limit, say, OK, I just want to execute 10 number of migrations, whatever it is that you want. Uh, my recommendation is just to run up, uh, especially since it's the first time. There's no point in uh, skipping anything. We're doing a dry run. This should work properly. If this step fails, uh, it's probably due to the configuration error, like that the registry might not have access to the to the Postgres instance. So just make sure that the host name, the port, the password, and the SSL mode are all configured correctly. Um, but yeah, if I go ahead and run this. Uh, yeah, so this uh, omnibus de detects that the registry is running. So we need to stop the registry before proceeding. I'm going to say yes. And yeah, that's stop the registry. And then it's applying the migrations. Right now, the, the step that takes the longest is applying the post deployment migrations. But this is, this is a one time thing that you only need to do once. Uh, an important thing to note is Whenever we deploy or whenever we ship updates to the registry and the registry has new database uh, schema migrations, you need to apply them before you can uh, restart the registry. The registry will, will fail to start in that case. So uh, please bear with us while we automate this. It's all still manual. Uh, so you, you still need to do it uh, manually. OK, cool. So this has finished. We can see here. That it ran and it applied all migrations. And then if I connect to the database again, mm -hmm. oh. 
uh, you can see that all the all the tables are there, and you can select from migrations. Cool. We can see here that uh, all the migrations have been applied, and there should be, as of today, 154 rows here. And we are ready to continue. So um, the registry should be running, but here, just make sure that it is. You can apply, run the command, or you can just do sudo pli control uh, status, I believe. Yep, the registry restarted. That's all good. Uh, now we are gonna go ahead with the step to migrate the existing data that we have in the, in the database, sorry, in the in object storage right now. Like we said, it was about 255 gigabytes of data. And there's a few repositories, a few tags there. So uh, we should have enough data to see this in action. <clears throat> cool. So to do this, uh, we, we're going to assume we're following the three-step import method. This is all documented in the registry uh, code base. Uh, you can read a bit more uh, on the steps there. But a few things to note here is uh, the, the registry is set up to, uh, when the import is, is running, uh, the first step will uh, import all the metadata that, that is there. And the, the registry doesn't need in order to, you know, uh, we can still import this and the registry will function correctly. Okay, cut. We're going to cut this. And we're going to start again when I say this. Okay, so now we're going to continue and we're going to migrate with the existing uh, registry data into the meta da metadata database. Uh, we're going to assume we're following the three step import method. Uh, that is described in the in the um, documentation of the registry code base. Um, we we divide it into three steps. The first step is going to do the bulk of the operation. This uh, while you're running this operation, the registry can function in in regular mode. Um, but just need to be aware that uh, whatever data that is written before between the step running now and uh, running step two, uh, the longer you wait for this to to run the longer it's going to take for step two to complete. And step two requires a registry to be in read-only mode. So uh, that's, that could affect your, uh, your operations, your day-to-day -day operations. So it's very important to try to schedule step one and step two very close to each other. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's go with step one uh, first. So we call this a uh, process the pre-import process, or step one. Uh, it's fairly simple. All we need to do is do the same at the database section. We already did that. Uh, we also apply the schema migration, so we really to do this. So what we're gonna do is uh, just uh, do this command here, which is basically telling the re registry database imports step one. And this is gonna take a fair amount of time. I'm gonna let this running and I'm gonna you know, just let it be and I'll get back to you when this is done. Hello again. So um, yeah, before I left you last time, I was uh, running the step one of the import process. Um, which is called the pre-import repositories. Uh, it That took a bit longer than I was expecting. It took about 15 hours to migrate 255 gigabytes of data. Uh, it's worth noting though, I'm just using a single uh, node GitLab instance installation. So, you know, there's not much, not many resources. And also the bottleneck is probably the database, which is running in a Docker container inside the same instance. So. Uh, there's not many resources available for it. So I'm guessing it, that's why it took so long. Um, but either way, uh, after that is done, now we can continue on to step number two of the import process. So we want to 
this part, we need to make sure that the registry is actually in read-only mode, which is uh, kind of important here. So what we need to do is uh, we need to edit our GitLab config again. So we're going to go to uh, edit GitLab, GitLab config. And then we're going to find a section called uh, object storage for the container registry. Uh, in this case, it's already, um, I had already put this. So what, what we need to do is under the storage section, just below the GCS section, we want to make sure that we add this comment here. It's all in the documentation. And it should look something like this. So what we're saying is, uh, please do not allow uh, writes to my registry and to make uh, ensure this happens we just save this file we need to reconfigure GitLab GitLab control reconfigure Woo. this would take a little bit of, a little bit a few seconds um well okay there's something here wrong let's see what's going on oh I know what is happening. I'm missing a comma here. <laughs> so yeah, just make sure the comma is there. And let's try that again. Take a bit. The changes should be detected as well. And the change in the config should be, yep, somewhere here. It's telling us, okay, the registry config changed. So if I do a tail of the registry, registry, we can see that uh, we started and we can try to do a write. So for example, we can do another Docker push here. We are using the same registry. It's gonna say, yeah, cool. Uh, method not allowed, which means uh, we're not, basically we're not allowed, allowing any writes to the registry right now. So cool. Uh, before we go uh, continue with step two, we are going to check that the database uh, has some data. So for example, I'm gonna select from the blobs I can see there's a bunch of blobs. Uh, there's a bunch of repositories and you can explore the, the schema if you want. Uh, the one thing you'll notice is that tasks will be empty and that's because that's gonna happen in the second uh, step. So we're ready to do that. Now that we have the registry in read-only mode, I'm just gonna execute this command. This should hopefully shouldn't take us long. Oh, sorry about that. My, uh, my configuration was changed while I was testing some other stuff. I have set the SSL mode as required. Uh, this means you need to uh, set the the certificates, but I don't have those right now. So I'm just going to say disable and I need to reconfigure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while we wait for this, um, the rest of the steps will be here. So not too much to worry about right now. Just wait for this to finish. Cool. All right. So now we're ready for uh, the import step two. And I am guessing that's still going to take some time because some writes need to happen in here. And yeah, importing tags uh, is fast. It's faster than the pre-import, but it still needs to go through all the tags that are that exist in, in object storage right now. So with that, I am going to leave this running and I'll get back to you when this is done.
Okay, hello again. Um, now I'm just going to continue with the demo of how we're migrating the repositories to the database. Uh, last time we stopped at this step, step three, uh, of, well, this run step two of the migration. Uh, this, um, this step took about almost four hours on a single instance on a very big registry. It was four, uh, 250 gigabytes of, of data um, with just a single instance. So, you know, it's all uh, a bit slow. Uh, this is a test project. So, you know, on, an, on a production environment it should be much better. Um, cool. So now that we're here, we're going to go into the step uh, four, which is basically re-enabling the registry uh, with the database uh, settings. I already did that. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is the the configuration to see how it looks like. Um, uh, the two important things to note is uh, disabling the read-only mode from the storage configuration of the registry. It's either setting this to false or actually uh, deleting all this, sec the maintenance section, if you want. And the other one is uh, the database settings. Registry database. And this setting was set to false uh, before running step two. Now we can set it to, to true. And that should be all, all you need to run your registry. Then you need to do uh, reconfigure And uh, I'm not going to do it because I've already done that and it's already running, but we can fail the registry logs to see that it's working. We have a bunch of, of logs here. Uh, we have a, a worker running in the background, which is the online garbage collector. You can see here with the name. Uh, so that's enabled when the database uh, is enabled and it's doing its job uh, properly. That's removing all content that we don't need anymore. And we can do a quick select on the database to see that the new tags have all been migrated to the registry database. The last time we saw this, this was uh, empty. And also we did a test, uh, we tried to push a uh, repository when it was, uh, when the registry was set to read only mode and now that it's all the migration, the step two was completed. We can see that the repository exists now and it's all good to go. And yeah, after going that, after doing this, we are now on the database. The registry is now fully migrated, um, but we need to make sure uh, we run the step three, which is basically just importing, you know, uh, potentially unused blobs. So that means there might be dangling data stored in object storage that is not referenced by anything. And we need to, to import that to the database so that the garbage collector can do its job about, uh, of cleaning them if, if it needs to. But we need to keep track of them uh, somehow. So to do the final step, we just need to run this, um, this command here. This is the step three. We can stop tailing the logs from here. Just gonna do this, step three. And this uh, doesn't need the read-only mode. This can be left running in the background and the registry can still be used as, as normal. And I'm just gonna let it run um, for a while while this is happening. And I'm not gonna come back to this uh, after this, but uh, once it's all done, you are good to go. Uh, to, with the with the database, uh, please remember to check out the the nodes that we set up here. And uh, it's very important that you do not disable the database again after this, and that you don't run uh, offline garbage collection. Uh, if you don't know what offline garbage collection means, uh, it it means running the command, the manual command that we have, this one here, 
called garbage collect. Uh, sorry, this one here. It's this one uh, called GitLab Control Registry Garbage Collect. This one is not compatible with the database, so please don't run in again. Uh, yeah, that's um, probably all that I have. Please, um, if you have any issues, we do have a feedback issue in here. Uh, please feel free to reach out if you, if you have any 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 problems or any questions regarding the, the migration. There's a few things that people have asked. If you encounter an issue, just uh, have a look. There might have there might be a solution already there for you. And yes, uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.